and welcome to Dark Star from 1974 by John Carpenter. Written and directed by John Carpenter. And I think that this was his first ever feature film. And it was a very low budget and um, a student film. Low budget student film from John Carpenter. That alone is very interesting. Um, yeah, science fiction. So I expect not great effects, very bad effects, but I expect a great story because John Carpenter stories are often great. Yeah. This, I think this is uh, the first John Carpenter film I react to. Or was it? Yes, it is, in fact. And that's great because starting with his first film <laughs> is a good choice. I've seen a, I've seen a few John Carpenter films like They Live, which is one of my favorite. I've seen uh, Wait, <laughs> let me check. John Carpenter. John Carpenter. <laughs> Assault on Precinct 13. That was a very good film. Halloween, of course. I've seen Halloween. Um, the fuck I haven't seen. The Thing? I haven't seen. This will come. And I haven't seen it because I know that this is a remake of the original uh, The Thing from Another World from the 50s and I wasn't sure what to watch but I but I had a little chat with my father and he said watch this one this this is way superior than the original one yeah Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase I've seen that <laughs> Vampires I've seen Vampires but I have to say this is my least favorite of him. And I think that Starman. Oh, Starman. I, f I forgot Starman. Jeff Bridges. Also great. Christine. Stephen King story. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so, yeah. His first one. Very excited. And a very short one. And there were... There are different versions. Mm. The only version I could could find was um, like the extended because there's an original cut, there's a director's cut, there's a student film cut, and this cut is the longest. The director's cut is even sh ten minutes shorter than this. Hmm. But okay. All right something else <laughs> hmm, interesting it was nominated no it won best special effects by the Academy of Science Fiction Fantasy and Horror Films huh so even it was a low budget student film in 74 it won an award huh interesting but still I expect w worse I expect uh, bad special effects. <laughs> Very bad special effects, to be honest. What I'm asking myself is if John Carpenter made the music. Because the music is always top notch. Always. I haven't seen a single John Carpenter film where the music was not, was not at least mediocre. <laughs> It was always great. Mm, music by John Carpenter. Yes. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what I know about this film is <laughs> that, yeah, a group of uh, scientists in uh, went into space 
and something goes wrong. I have no clue what is going wrong, but I have a guess. I have a guess that they are so isolated that they they are going crazy. I think I think I heard it somewhere. And that's my guess. <laughs> but of course I'm not uh, but I'm not sure. Okay. Enough said. Just one more thing. Let's rock. <laughs> sounds like sounds like an old video game from the 70s. Scout ship. Hmm. So it's a scouting mission. Must be. Hmm. Music by John Carpenter. But 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 he is here he is using very harsh synthesizer sounds. In back, I have that computer reading. It's nine five seven seven. Very, very, it's very tight in there. There's no no place to move. This sector is now clear for colonization. You have destroyed the last unstable planet in this system. Hmm. Is, is that the mission to destroy unstable planets? Well, I show a 95% probability of intelligent life in the Horsehead Nebula Sector. Don't give me that kind of bull. Remember when Commander Powell found that 99 plus probability of intelligent life in Magellanic Cloud? Remember what we found? A damn mindless vegetable looked like a limp balloon. 14 light years for a vegetable that went squawk and let it think when you touch it. Remember that? All right, then. Uh... Don't give me any of that intelligent life stuff. Find me something I can blow up. I get some alien vibes. Huh. When did Alien come came out? After this. Hmm. Let's have some music in here, Boiler. Sure thing. And now, now the credits, the opening credits, Dark Star. <laughs> With some country music. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So what I got by now is the mission is to destroy unstable planets. And now I think is that it's kind of like Alien, where they find some life form and the life form causes some trouble. Huh. And production wise, <laughs> it's like I expected. It's pretty bad. <laughs> oh man, the, all the effects. Not like the, the, like this. That, uh, that's so unrealistic. Where's the light coming from? If this is stars, then <laughs> they stars w would be so far away that that they're not even moving. Even if they, the crew with the ship went over light speed, they would still not moving like this. Okay, it's a student film. <laughs> so, I don't really care. But uh, I thought that this was more like a psych psychology thriller or some, some sort. To 
to play games l l like that, you, you have to be very bored. Hmm. Or maybe it is a psychological thriller. And they are going crazy. <laughs> Trying to make music. I wonder how long they are on this mission. It seems like um, that they are bored for a long time. For a long, long time. time. The Phoenix Asteroids. Phoenix Asteroids? Never heard of them. They're a body of asteroids that circle the universe once every 12.3 trillion years. He said tri over a trillion years, but the universe is only 14 billion years old. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your recreation, fellows, but it is time for Sergeant Pinback to feed the alien. Oh, I don't want to do that. Feed the alien? May I remind you, Sergeant Pinback, that it was your idea in the first place to bring the alien on board. Huh? They have an alien on board already. All right, where are you? Come on, quit playing around. Huh. And I guess it was very small, but now it, it grew. Come on, come on. <laughs> A beach boy. <laughs> That's the alien. All right, soup's on. We didn't have none of the other stuff. Here, take it or leave it. <laughs> hmm. Get back in there. This kind of reminds me uh, of uh, critters. They also seemed very cute. And then they they showed the the faces and the teeth. <laughs> Typical John Carpenter music. Very intelligent. <clears throat> He's gonna fall, isn't he? I think the alien is gonna push him. Attention. Central trunk elevator shaft is now activated. All personnel, please clear the area. Oh. Oh, shit. That could work. Uh, or maybe not. <laughs> now he has a problem. <laughs> that little rascal. <laughs> Elevator descending. Oh. Please clear the shaft. Yeah. He will get crushed. Oi. There's no emergency ladder or doors to get out. Very 
very strange design. And what's the purpose of of the ele um, elevator? <laughs> it's it's just going up and down for no reason. Attention, danger. Automatic charges will now blow the explosive bolts in the floor plate unit. The plate will disengage from the floor in five will, seconds. It will be cut in half, will it? Please leave the elevator immediately. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Is this a comedy or what? <laughs> oh man. Now it's time to go sleepy by, you worthless piece of garbage. Hmm. So now the alien is dead? Just like that? Huh. And also, this film has small elements of 2001. But two, 2001 was before the end of 60s. Hmm. That's interesting. What the film is doing great is making me uncomfortable. And and nervous. <laughs> I don't know. Because the, the music is always like very dark and mysterious. But the story is very all over the place. And I'm still not 100% sure where this film is going. Attention, uh -oh. attention. The laser has malfunctioned. Under no circumstances enter the path of the beams. To do so will cause a... <laughs> huh. I thought he, he was... He was gonna cut in half. If he enters the laser, but maybe not. <laughs> but now they have a fire. And he's like a DJ on the turntables, doing and stuff and this and that. But but the music <laughs> goes anyway. <laughs> the music plays anyway. So what is he doing? serious has come up, I have to ask you a question. I'm glad you've come to talk with me, Guru. It's been so long since anyone has come to talk with me. What the fuck is that? Is, is he the computer? What the fuck? So many malfunctions. Why don't you have anything nice to tell me when you activate me? Okay, he's not the computer, but I don't know how, how to. <laughs> Commander, hello, come in. Commander Powell. So he's a commander, but why? Why is he like that? <laughs> For what reason? Time, sir. Oh, yes. Well, Guru, if you can't get it to drop, you'll have to talk to it, sir. Talk to the bomb. And it's also funny that they just taped 
the uh, the cuts <laughs> just on on his skin, <laughs> and that's how how he's connected to the system <laughs> by duct tape. What concrete evidence do you have that you exist? Hmm. Well, I think, therefore, I am. Now listen, listen, here's the big question. How do you know that the evidence your sensory apparatus reveals to you is correct? What I'm getting at is this. The only experience that is directly available to you is your sensory data. And this sensory data is merely a stream of electrical impulses that stimulates your computing center. In other words, all that I really know about the outside world is relayed to me through my electrical connections. Exactly. Why, that would mean that I really don't know what the outside universe is like at all for certain. That's it, that's it. Intriguing. I wish I had more time to discuss this matter. Why don't you have more time? Because I must detonate in 75 seconds. And also the music, I like the music. Now, Bomb. Consider this next question very carefully. What is your one purpose in life? To explode, of course. And you can only do it once, right? That is correct. And you wouldn't want to explode on the basis of false data, would you? Of course not. Well then, you've already admitted that you have no real proof of the existence of the outside universe. Yes, well... So you have no absolute proof that Sergeant Pinback ordered you to detonate. I recall distinctly the detonation order. My memory is good on matters like these. Of course you remember it, but, but all you're remembering is merely a series of sensory impulses which you now realize have no real definite connection with, with outside reality. True. But since this is so, I have no proof that you are really telling me all this. <laughs> That's all beside the point. I mean, the concept is valid no matter where it originates. Hmm. So if you detonate in... Nine seconds. Nine seconds. I must think on this further. Hmm. <laughs> oh, but, uh, but it reminds me so much of two thousand one, <laughs> and I. Uh, and I don't remember a lot about 2001. I've seen it ages ago. So I don't, I can't really compare, but that was very like it. Whoop. <laughs> Calby. Calby, can you read me? Calby, can you read me? No, you're not written. <laughs> sorry, sorry. False data can act only as a distraction. Therefore, I shall refuse to perceive you. The only thing which exists is myself. In the beginning, there was darkness, and the darkness was without form and void. And in addition to the darkness, there was also me. And I moved upon the face of the darkness, <laughs> and I saw that I was alone. <laughs> like God. Kind of like God. Let there be light. Uh. <laughs> Like the skipper. He made it. Commander Powell, he made it. What happened? <laughs> Looks like I'm headed for the planet. I'm going right toward it. When you hit the atmosphere, you'll start to burn. If he if he's that fast <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> Assuming that planet is very big, so this was very fast. But if it's flying in this angle above the planet, then she should, uh, he should end up in a in an orbit, in an endless orbit, continuously falling. Oh 
home, but <laughs> with the music. And he's burning. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh man. What a strange little film that was. <laughs> oh man. The end of Dark Star. <laughs> That's it. All right. <laughs> I have a lot to tell. So, see you in the review. All right. That was it. That was Dark Star from John Carpenter from 1974. And here we go. <laughs> First off, what a strange film. It was so weird <laughs> in so many ways, but entertaining. It had, it also had many flaws, but I was watching the film w with a mindset so that I don't care. I was expecting bad effects and yeah, stuff like that. So what the hell? <laughs> uh, but it, it was a film, a very short film, but there were, it was one film, but of three other films. Like for instance, 2001. And like I said, it's so way, it's um, so far back that I watched it, that I can't really say anything about it, but the scene with the computer and he was talking to the computer in a very philosophical way, that reminded me very strong of uh, 2001. Mm. And Alien. And I, I've checked, I've checked the writer. It was written by John Carpenter and Dan O'Bannon. And I found out that Dan O'Bannon, a few years later, wrote uh, Alien. And you can see the similarities in this one and later in Alien. <laughs> um, I, like, I like the fact that this film doesn't take itself so seriously. Uh... <laughs> it was, it had, had its moments, the humorous moments, <laughs> like when he, when he was uh, in the elevator and actually able to get out of the shaft, <laughs> the look on his face, his movements and the music, <laughs> that, that was very funny and it, it was, it um, catch me by surprise because I was expecting a lot, but not this, not scenes like this to, to be so funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was pretty good. Um, or like the end where, <laughs> where they're surfing into the atmosphere, <laughs> the music. It was very, I don't know, heroic in a sense. <laughs> heroic and funny. Yeah. Mm. But it has all it had also some very serious notes. And it was also very slow paced for such a short short film. Long very long dragged out scenes. Mm. I don't know what to think about that. I mean, it wasn't bad, but also not good. It was ju just long scenes. But when stuff stuff happened, it was very suspenseful. Again, the elevator scene. I was thinking, okay, that's it for him. He will he will die. He will get smashed or, or cut in half or whatever. <laughs> and that scene was so sus suspenseful, but then ending up in such a comedic way, that was that was something 
I I haven't experienced like if I have ever experienced something like that in a very long time. I can't remember <laughs> when you think, oh my god, something bad happened. And then it I don't know. Yeah. What else? Uh, yeah, special effects. Pretty bad. But low budget. So understandable. But again, I was expecting that. And yeah, but also... Hmm, I mean, it was... 74 and when I compare it with 2001 for example which was a very serious and realistically portrayed film about space mm, like the research they have done is was also pretty bad I have to say very unrealistic in many ways and even back then, they should have known that it's not like that, how they portrayed it. Uh, portrayed it. Yeah. And that's, that's my strongest critique, I think. Yeah. But on the, on the other hand, mm, if the humorous moments weren't there, then... Then I would say, okay, that was pretty bad, but it's forgivable because it doesn't took itself so serious. Yeah. Yeah. So in the end, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I'm still not sure. The film has ended, but I'm still not sure what the film really was about. It was so messed up. I don't know. Yeah. So, John Carpenter's first film. Pretty good, I have to say. Pretty good. For that budget, for that time, it was pretty good. Yeah. Solid. Ah, oh, ah not solid. <laughs> solid is, is the wrong word for this kind of film. But, yeah, pretty good. Pretty enjoyable. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the music. The music, again, was very well done. Very John Carpenter-like. Fitting the scene, pretty much. Pretty good. Hmm. But it's not, like, so iconic. For example, the assault on Precinct uh, 13. That was very iconic, that music. And they live. Wow, the music. Wow. <laughs> so good. And even vampires, which I consider the um the weakest film from John Carpenter. But the music I don't know just great. The music of vampires was the atmosphere was on point. Because of the music. This also, but not so iconic. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And I would even say that John Carpenter, which is a great director, but I would say he's a better musician than a director. And he's a great director. <laughs> so very great musician. Yeah. I, res I respect his craft very much. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Budget, estimated budget, 60,000. That's not so low. <laughs> solo. <laughs> that's not Han Solo. No, that's, that's actually a lot. It's still low budget, but for student film? 60,000 in 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 the 70s that's like half a million today 
maybe a little less, I don't know. But I would say it's half a million, maybe. 74. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Okay, now. That's it. I have nothing more to say. Really. <laughs> okay, I would say, see you next time. Bye-bye.